Assalamu uh, alaikum everyone. Uh, I would like to welcome you today for another day of uh, a series of webinars which, is, which are organized by Saudi Society for Blood Disorder. Today is the second day uh, of the Peripheral Blood Morphology course, crash course. Uh, and today talk, uh, Dr. Haytham uh, Fogir will try to cover WBC morphology and hematological emergencies. Uh, so it will be over one and a half hour. And uh, please, uh, please type your questions, comments on the Q&A uh, section. Uh, please be reminded that uh, the webinar is recorded and will be available in, through uh, uh, SSPD social media, social media accounts. Uh, without any further uh, ado, it's my great pleasure to introduce uh, Dr. Haytham. Uh, Dr. Haytham is a, is a hematopathologist uh, at King uh, Faisal Specialist Hospital in Riyadh. He was trained in MD Anderson and we are looking forward to his, his talk. Uh, please be reminded that uh, this, this uh, series of webinars are uh, sponsored by RS from Abbott. Uh, without any further ado, Dr. Haitha, the mic is yours. Shukran, Dr. Franz. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Can you see my slide? Uh, not yet, if you can share the screen. Let me share the screen. Okay. Uh, now? It's clear now, but if you can put it in the presentation mode. Okay. Clear now? Yes. Okay. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, in this presentation, I will talk about the different non-malignant leukocytes disorder, in other hand, benign white blood cell disorders. So I try my best to summarize and make it, make it simple for you. So let us start with the case number one. This is peripheral blood smear from a 30 years old female who came for general checkup. As you can see here, her laboratory data shows normal CBC, but let's identify the cells that shown on this image. So these cells are neutrophil, and this is xenophil, and this one basophil, and this one monocyte, and this one lymphocyte. So segmented neutrophil is the mature cells of the myeloid series that constitute 40% to 70% of the white blood cells, of course, in the peripheral blood. This is band cells. So band neutrophil is the immediate precursor of the segmented neutrophils. And it constitutes around 5 to 10% of the white blood cells in the peripheral blood during normal condition. This is monocytes, which looks larger than neutrophils and shows abundant gray or gray-blue cytoplasm that may contain vacuoles, as you can appreciate here. The chromatin is condensed, but is usually dense than that what you can see it in the neutrophils or lymphocytes. Xenophil is characterized by coarse orange red granules, uniform size, and is similar to a neutrophil in the diameter. And normally, the nucleus demonstrates condensed chromatin and nuclear segmentation with two and sometimes three nuclear loop. This is basophil, which is the least common circulating granulocyte. And this is unlike neutrophil, which shows three, five loop nuclear or loop. It typically has only two prominent nuclear loop and cytoplasmic with numerous dense purple basophilic granules, often obscuring the nuclear details. 
This is typical lymphocyte, which is slightly larger than normal RBCs with scant to moderate pale blue cytoplasm, round nuclear contour, mature chromatin, and inconspicuous nuclei. This is large granular lymphocyte, which is medium to large cells with round nuclear or nucleus, dense chromatin, and no visible nuclei. The cytoplasm is moderate to abundant, clear and lightly basophilic compared to the, the previous, uh, previous typical lymphocyte and contain several coarse uh, uneven uh, distributed uh, small azerophilic uh, uh, granules. So this diagram shows how these, sorry, cells maturation sequence. So we have common myeloid progenitor cells and common lymphoid progenitor cells. So common myeloid progenitor cells create three types of progenitors. Granulocyte monocyte progenitors, which give rise to neutrophils and monocyte and macrophage. The second one is xenophils basophils progenitor, which give rise to xenophils and basophils. And megakaryocyte erythrocyte progenitors, which give rise to platelet and erythrocyte. On the other hand, there is common lymphoid progenitor which gave rise to the lymphocyte, either B and T. So each of these divided and matures into cells known as blast, one for each cell line from where they divided and differentiated to different subtypes. These figures demonstrate the normal maturation sequence of neutrophil starting from myeloblast, which is the early stage of uh, neutrophils, then it matures or differentiate into promyelocyte, then myelocyte, after that metamyelocyte, and band neutrophils, and finally segmented mature neutrophils. So in the peripheral blood, usually you find segmented neutrophils and band neutrophils. Case two. This peripheral blood smear is from a 50 years old woman with septic shock. So her laboratory data shows white blood cells, 15.6, and low red blood cells, low hemoglobin, and also low platelet. So she has, before going to detail, I just want you to recognize the abnormal finding just by looking up to the CBC and preferred blood morphology. So based on the preferred blood, uh, sorry, based on the CBC result and preferred blood smear, patient has abnormal count, as we said, high white blood cell count and low hemoglobin and platelet, along with some morphological changes in the neutrophil. Case three, this peripheral blood smear is from a 30 years old male presenting with systemic sclerosis. Again, before going to the details based on the CBC and peripheral blood morphology, this patient has abnormal count, low white blood cells, along with abnormal neutrophils. So now let's first have an overview of the different white blood cell disorder classification. So we categorize this disorder into quantitative, where there is an alteration in the number, or qualitative, where there is morphological or functional alteration. Quantitative can be subdivided into two again, which are acquired, including reactive process or inherited, and malignant or clonal, which will be discovered, uh, covered tomorrow. 
the acquired alteration usually described by an increase or decrease in the white blood cells. For qualitative alteration, it can be categorized into three conditions. Uh, morphologic abnormalities or with normal morphology and those with morphological changes. So each white blood cells we have, the neutrophil, eosinophils, basophils, monocytes, lymphocytes, may either have a qualitative or quantitative abnormalities. Many times, almost all cases show quantitative and qualitative abnormalities parallel together. To discuss the quantitative abnormalities, it is necessary to define the different reference ranges for the white blood cells count and for its subtype. It is also to remember that these reference ranges may vary in between laboratory because of different cell counting procedure, instrumentation used in the laboratories, method that used in the validation to establish uh, this value. Also, different reference value may given to the different uh, patient uh, population. So this is the reference value that we followed in the King Faisal Specialist Hospital. And these are some related important terminology that we use it when we are deal with quantitative white blood disorder leukocytosis, simply defined as leukocyte count above a normal range. Leukopenia, again, which is defined as having white blood cell count of less than a normal reference range. And pancytopenia, uh, this term given when there is a decrease in all other different, uh, of all other different cell type also. So going back to the previous case to discuss it in detail. So this is peripheral blood smear, again from a 50 years old woman with septic shock. Her laboratory, as we said, it shows leukocytosis and the differential shows mainly neutrophil that represent around 85%. So the leukocytosis is characterized by increased neutrophils which we call it neutrophilia, which is increase in the neutrophil count above the reference range. And the three main causes of neutrophilia are infection, inflammation, and malignancy. Also, it either be pathologic or non-pathologic. In other hand, it can be result of primary causes like MPM or secondary causes like infection and others. Leukocytosis, as we said, it characterized by increased neutrophil, of which many shows toxic changes. So the toxic changes include toxic granulation, which is mean granulation is more prominent than what it is typically observed or seen in the normal neutrophil. So this is normal neutrophil, and these two neutrophils showing increased granulation or toxic granulation. The second change is toxic vacuolation. Again, compare it with the normal. There is no vacuoles in the normal neutrophils. However, this cells or this neutrophil shows prominent vacuoles. The third changes is Dohly bodies. So basically these are blue or gray, blue, round, elongated shape inclusions found at the periphery of the cytoplasm near the cell membrane. So either toxic granulation or dolly body if present in individual neutrophil in isolation, it will be sufficient to designate a neutrophil as a toxic. On the other hand, vacuolation can be due to either toxic changes or degeneration process. Therefore, the process of neutrophil with vacuolation as a sole finding should not be labeled as a toxic vacuole. 
unless a combined by toxic granules and or dolly bodies. So leukocytosis in septic shock and other reactive condition may be so high as to mimic leukemia. Then it referred to as a leukemoid reaction where there are an increase in the neutrophil in addition to some lift shift. Infection, trauma like burn, underlying cancer, uh, especially when they shows paraneoblastic reaction and drug like GCSF uh, may cause leukemoid reaction. Leukemoid reaction may be confused with the MPN, including CML, atypical CML, or even or uh, CNL, chronic neutrophilic leukemia. So how we can differentiate these? So in leukemoid reaction, neutrophils are dominant and usually shows toxic changes, toxic granulation and dohly bodies. While C in the CML, uh, the, it shows uh, some left shifted with the expansion of intermediate stage, myelocyte and metamyelocyte. As we can see here, left shift, some immature myeloid uh, precursor. In addition with basophilia and eosinophilia. Uh, therefore, uh, careful attention to cytological characteristic of the neutrophils, for example, toxic feature and presence of an accompanying left shift as well as uh, clinical and laboratory feature, for example, uh, history of infection, trauma, uh, drug uh, is required to arrive at the correct interpretation of the peripheral blood smear. Case three, this peripheral blood smear is from an 11 years old girl presenting to the emergency room with wheezing and she is diagnosed with asthma. So she, her CBC showed a uh, high white blood cell count. And as you can appreciate here, eosinophils. So her peripheral blood shows a lot of eosinophils because her differential uh, or the leukocytosis is characterized by increased eosinophils. So this patient has eosinophilia. And the xenophilia can be primary or secondary. Primary, that means xenophils are neoplastic, such as that absorbed with the MPN, or secondary, like that involved with the uh, reactive process, like uh, infection, mainly with the parasite or allergic reaction, like uh, asthma or uh, uh, atopic dermatitis. Uh, xenophilia also can be uh, short-lived or prolonged. In most cases, short-lived xenophilia is uh, it mainly due to uh, many of potential secondary causes. Uh, in cases of prolonged xenophilia, uh, especially at the high level, it is usually associated with the potentially primary xenophilia disorder. Uh, a detailed clinical uh, history and laboratory investigation is critical for appropriate management of patient with xenophilia. Uh, a patient history and physical examination are important to determine the presence of any risk factor or sign to guide subsequent laboratory testing. Uh, Peripheral blood smear has limited utility to distinguish between reactive and neoplastic causes of xenophilia. Uh, however, some mild dysplastic feature, including hypogranulity or hypersegmentation, more than three uh, loops, and vacuolated cytoplasm can also be seen in the reactive condition in uh, yeah, any limited. However, uh, frequent or marked dysplasia 
especially when you have uh, xenophil with abnormal coarse uh, granules like this one that uh, coupled with the uh, dysplasia in the other cell lines or coupled with the blast, these finding favors a new plastic process. Uh, again, examination of the peripheral blood uh, carefully, especially the tail of the smear and the edges of the smear is very important to reveal it may show some parasites. Uh, if a clear reactive causes is not uh, identified, uh, further uh, investigation, including a bone marrow biopsy, cytogenetics, and other molecular testing should be performed. Uh, overall, xenophilia is an effective of a variety of process and require uh, a thorough investigation and clinical, uh, co clinical correlation. Case four, so this preferably, the peripheral blood is from a 19 years old male who complained of fatigue and fever. So his white blood cells is high with normal RBCs and hemoglobin and platelet count. Again, the leukocytosis is characterized by increased lymphocytes. And these lymphocytes, it's look a little bit atypical if we compare it and different if we compare it with the normal one. So lymphocytosis in general can be divided into those with, uh, with reactive morphology and those without uh, reactive uh, alteration. Causes of the reactive morphology are usually uh, viral infection like uh, CMV, HIV, and herpes. Um, although other bacterial infection also may cause an increased lymphocyte uh, like syphilis. Uh, and uh, example for an unreactive morphology would be whooping cough that caused by portadilla uh, pertosis. And uh, if you want to differentiate between the reactive lymphocyte from the other uh, variant, the key distinguishing feature for uh, of the reactive lymphocyte is their wide range of cellular size and shape, as you can appreciate in this picture, uh, as well as a nuclear size, shape, and chromatin pattern. Uh, this is another picture for the reactive uh, lymphocyte. So reactive lymphocytes usually have abundant cytoplasm, which is intensely basophilic, and sometimes shows cytoplasmic blip formation. And this feature uh, usually it's reflect the immune process or immune stimulus uh, that uh, initiated by uh, a viral infection. Uh, in contrast, while lymphoma uh, condition uh, exhibit more monotonous uh, population of uh, abnormal uh, lymphocyte. So for this case, further testing demonstrate positive monospot test that confirming uh, infectious uh, monoculiasis. Case five, this peripheral blood smear is from a 35 years old uh, uh, man with no significant past medical history who presenting with headache and easy bruising. Laboratory data includes white blood cells shows low count around two, RBC and hemoglobin also reduced and platelet shows thrombocytopenia, severe thrombocytopenia. So generally, patient is having, has pancytopenia. So the leukopenia here is characterized by the presence of these abnormal cells. So these cells, again, this is another picture for these abnormal cells. 
So basically these are abnormal promyelocytes, which consider as a blast equivalent in the background of leukemia. And we want to compare these cells with the normal promyelocytes. So promyelocytes are round to oval cells that are generally slightly larger than the myeloblast. But the abnormal promyelocyte differ from the normal promyelocyte in several uh, aspects. The abnormal promyelocyte nucleus is usually folded or by loop, like here. This is another picture of by looped cells. Uh, often with overlapping nuclear loops. And the distinct Golgi zone is typically absent in these abnormal promyelocytes. So this is the normal promyelocyte showing Golgi zone, the pre-nuclear half, which is disappear or absent in the abnormal or leukemic uh, promyelocyte. Uh, cytoplasmic granules, while abundant in the classic hypersegmented form of the APL, uh, may differ in the appearance and uh, often being uh, uh, coarser and dark uh, than those seen in the normal uh, promyelocyte and slightly, uh, yes, and unusually obscure the nuclear details. The abnormal promyelocyte frequently contains numerous overlapping uh, our roads. And these cells that showing multiple hour roads can be called uh, phagot cells. Uh, in the macro granular variant of APL, very few granules may be visible, like this case or this picture. Uh, and those granules present uh, may be very fine. So this patient has APL and patient with APL typically present with leukopenia and variable degree of uh, anemia and thrombos uh, thrombocytopenia. However, some cases can present with leukocytosis, especially in the micro uh, variant or um, uh, microgranular uh, APL. Uh, it can be subdivided into two morphological feature, hypergranular, which is typical, and hypogranular, a micro variant, or variant uh, APL. Um, the neoplastic cells in the hypergranular typically contain numerous dense, dark uh, purple granules and often obscuring the nucleus. And also it shows frequent hour roads, occasionally forming bundles, uh, typically uh, present and called phagot cells. And this is the common uh, in contrast, the hypogranular or microgranular variant, as the name implies, it display uh, spares uh, uh, to inconspicuous granules. Uh, APL is considered as one of the most uh, uh, emergency case uh, in the and serious case in the hematology surface that need quick action because of high rate of death, mainly due to uh, coagulopathy. So once you have a case, you suspect uh, this is APL, just inform the clinician to give him a time to start the treatment as soon as possible. Uh, in addition to the CBC with differential uh, and review of the peripheral blood smear, uh, all patients with a presumptive APL uh, diagnosis must undergo uh, an urgent uh, laboratory evaluation. And this evaluation or this investigation uh, include a coagulation uh, panel or coagulation screen to evaluate the presence of DIC, uh, flow cytometry and immunophenotyping, 
cytogenetic and molecular analysis to confirm uh, the diagnosis uh, and to confirm the presence of underlying BML RARA uh, translocation. Uh, be careful. In case with markedly decreased white blood cells count, the abnormal promyelocyte uh, are usually spares in the peripheral blood. Therefore, a careful morphologic evaluation of the peripheral blood uh, smear uh, uh, with identification of abnormal problem is crucial. So this is why usually when you have a, a, a smear from the markedly decreased white blood cells, uh, you have to go and find these cells in the thick area and also in the tail. Uh, Okay, so this uh, chart would summarize all the possible uh, quantitative uh, disorders, uh, starting with leukocytosis, which is divided into neutrophilia, eosinophilia, basophilia, monocytosis, and lymphocytosis. And this chart again shows the quantitative disorder, which is uh, mainly in the leukopenia, so neutropenia, xenophilia, basop uh, basopenia, and monocytopenia and lymphopenia. So in the next slides, we will discuss some qualitative white blood cells with abnormal morphology. But uh, before that, uh, for the quant qualitative abnormality with normal morphology, uh, but with the functional the fact the best answer, the best example to be mentioned is chronic granulomatous uh, disease, which is caused by uh, a mutation in the NADBH oxidase gene, which leads to failure of neutrophil uh, respiratory uh, burst following uh, phagocytosis. Okay, next case number six. So this peripheral blood smear is from a 30 years old male presenting with systemic sclerosis. So his laboratory data shows mild leukopenia, uh, almost normal uh, red blood cells, hemoglobin and platelet. So any guess the arrow cells, what is the arrow cell? Any guess in the Q and A? Let's have some interaction. Yes, so this neutrophil shows bilgar nucleus. So if we compare this nucleus with the normal, as we said, the segmented neutrophil shows segmented and more than two nuclear loop, but this cells shows only two loops. So neutrophils with two uh, round nuclear loops connected by a distinct thin uh, filament are designated as neutrophils with Bilgerhoid nucleus or nuclei, or as Bilgerhoid cells. So Bilgerhoid cells, uh, Dr. Carl Bilger, a Dutch uh, hematologist, was the first one who described this uh, morphological feature in 1928, and the nuclear Chromatin in the builder hoid cells is generally denser than uh, in the normal cells, as we can appreciate here. So it's denser. And this feature uh, helps to differentiate the builder hoid cells from the normal neutrophils and uh, its precursor, which have more open or lightly staining uh, chromatin. So neutrophil with 
identical nuclear feature can be seen in Bilgerhoid anomaly, which is autosomal dominant inherited disorder, which was described by uh, pediatrician uh, G.J. Hewitt in 1932, and, uh, and occasionally uh, observed in the association with other clinical condition, uh, including MDS, infection, and uh, drugs also, where the proportion of uh, affected cells in these uh, situation is variable, but typically only a small subset are affected, uh, which is clue since in, uh, individual with the true uh, belger hoet anomaly usually demonstrate uh, this abnormalities in the majority of the uh, of the neutrophils. Uh, when these cells are seen in outside of the context of the congenital abnormality, uh, they are usually referred to as neutrophil with dysplastic uh, nucleus or pseudo with cells. Okay, case seven. So this peripheral blood smear is from a two years old boy who presented with delayed speech and skeletal deformities. Uh, his CBC shows normal white blood cell count. Patient is anemic and has mild uh, thrombocytopenia. So any guess what this cells? No. Any other guess? Yes. So this is abnormal, large coarse inclusions or granules that yeah, this neutrophils showing low, large course inclusions that refer sometimes as really bodies that's true in the cytoplasm of the neutrophils. So if we compare it with the normal neutrophils, and this is neutrophils showing toxic changes. So it's more coarser and more darker. So this is really bodies which correlate or can be seen in the elder line uh, really anomalies. So Elder's anomalies was first described by Elder uh, in 1939 and uh, by Rayleigh in 1941. Uh, accordingly, it is known as Elder Rayleigh anomaly. Uh, it is again autosomal uh, recessive inherited uh, disorder characterized by uh, presence of large azerophilic uh, and basophilic uh, granules uh, in the cell of the myeloid and uh, lymphocytic series. Uh, it can be associated with mucopolysaccharidosis, uh, which is a group of uh, metabolic uh, disorder uh, that caused by the absence or malfunctioning of uh, lysosomal enzyme that needed to break down uh, molecules called glycos uh, aminoglycans. Uh, however, uh, these uh, cells should not be confused with the toxic uh, granulation in the neutrophil, which are characteristically uh, present in the background of uh, as as we said before in the background of sepsis and can be seen in the background of infection or uh, myeloid growth factor uh, therapy. Okay, so this peripheral blood smear is from uh, a two years old girl 
uh, who presented with uh, fever, diarrhea, fatigue, and abdominal distension for the last 10 days. Uh, skin examination was remarkable with patchy uh, hypopigmentation around the face, trunk, back, abdomen, uh, hands, and feet, uh, along with the hypopigmented silver gray hair. Uh, his or her CBC shows uh, leukopenia, anemia, and thrombocytopenia. So it's pancytopenia. And in this figure, the neutrophils reveal abnormal giant lysosomal granules, as you can appreciate here, which also can be seen in the granulocyte uh, uh, precursor, uh, also in the lymphocyte and monocyte. So if we compare these cells with the normal uh, neutrophils, so easily you can appreciate the difference between this abnormal finding with the normal uh, neutrophils. So any guess what is this cell? True. So this is, uh, this is another example of the abnormal inclusion that can be observed in the uh, lymphocytes. So as you, yes, most of the people, they mentioned Shidek Higashi, yes. So this is Shidek Higashi uh, syndrome. So Shidek Higashi syndrome is a rare autosomal recessive condition that was initially described by uh, Biggs Caesar in 1943 and Shidiak in 1952 and Higashi in 1954. Uh, this rare uh, autosomal recessive disorder uh, arise uh, from a mutation uh, of uh, less lysosomal trafficking uh, regulator protein, uh, which also called uh, CHS1, Shidiak Higashi syndrome 1 gene, uh, which leads to a decrease in the phagocytosis. Uh, Shidiak Higashi is characterized clinically by uh, partial uh, oculocutaneous uh, albinism, uh, which is reduced uh, pigment in the skin and eye due to defect in the melanin granules, and also characterized by a recurrent uh, biogenic uh, bacterial infection due to abnormalities in the granulocytes. Also uh, bleeding, Uh, neurological uh, abnormality or neurological deficit are also common. So this disease, Shedek Higashi, can be categorized into classic and atypical or mild forms. Individual with the atypical form may have fewer or less severe infection and milder symptoms. Uh, children with the classic form of the disease are at risk for developing the accelerated phase. Uh, the accelerated phase usually occur in up to 80% of the patient and can occur at the, any age. Uh, and accelerated phase is caused by an, ex an excess production of the lymphocyte by the immune system, and patient can develop systems such as fever, uh, swelling of lymph node, or enlargement of the liver and spleen, uh, also anemia, uh, pancytopenia in general. And this is a, a serious condition and need to be uh, treated, uh, treated uh, right away. A Gracilia syndrome, also known as Shidiak uh, Higashi-like uh, uh, syndrome, 
and is a rare uh, inherited uh, disorder uh, that characterized by partial uh, albinism and abnormalities of a platelet uh, and white uh, abnormal of the platelet and white blood cells. Uh, the symptoms of uh, Gracile syndrome and Shidegegashi are almost similar. Uh, but on laboratory analysis, the white blood cells do not have the giant uh, granules like those seen in the Shidekegashi syndrome. Therefore, the diagnoses uh, are made differentially uh, based on these uh, white blood cells uh, granules. Okay, case 10. So... There is no case scenario. So what you can, any suggestion, what this abnormal neutrophil called? May Hegelin, another suggestion, yes. So this neutrophil shows Dohli-like inclusion bodies along with large Dohli-like inclusion bodies along with large or giant platelet. That's true. This is, again, if we compare it with the normal neutrophils, as you can see, there is no any inclusions similar to this one. So this is Mayhaglin anomaly. So Mayhaglin anomaly will have Dohli-like inclusion bodies in the neutrophils, also in the xenophils or basophils, as well as monocyte. Uh, thrombocytopenia and giant platelet also can be seen in concurrent. Uh, the disorder was first described by uh, Richard May, uh, uh, a German physician in 1909, and was subse uh, subsequently uh, described by Robert Hegelin, uh, Swiss physician in 1945. Uh, the Mayhaglin anomaly is inherited in uh, autosomal dominant fashion owing to a uh, mutation in uh, myosin uh, heavy chain uh, 9. Uh, a Mayhaglin uh, inclusion uh, is due to aggregates of non-muscles uh, myosin heavy chain uh, 2A. Okay, case 11. This is a 50 years old woman who presented with a two month of fever, chills, diarrhea, dry cough, and progressive dyspnea on exertion. Her CPC shows pancytopenia, and this is the preferred blood. Any suggestion what you can see in the preferred blood? Lishmania, no. Any other suggestion? Blue crystal, okay. Malaria, no. Okay, so this figure, uh, it's showing leukocytes with or phagocytizing uh, yeast form. So this yeast form is histoplasma capsulatum. So, Usually, uh, histoplasma, it will be engulfed by uh, neutrophils or uh, monocyte or uh, histocytes. It's not like uh, leishmania, which is uh, more often extracellular, not like histoplasma. Hisp histoplasma more often intracellular. So this infection is reported to be present in uh, 5 to 20 percent, uh, I guess, of AIDS patient and 95% of the cases it is manifested in its uh, disseminated forms. 
uh, serum antibody and uh, or antigen uh, research can make uh, diagnosis, but the demonstration of the agent by culture or histo uh, pathological examination remains the gold standard method. So remember, histoplasm usually uh, intracellular uh, uh, inclusions, and this is fungal uh, infection, but this is picture any guess. No. So this is abnormal inv invasion and it's distributed also extracellular in addition to intracellular. So this is uh, Lishmania inside and outside of the macrophage characterized by uh, kinetoblast and characteristic double dot uh, appearance. So Lishmania in usually uh, distributed intracellular and extracellular uh, of the cells. Okay, other findings that you can see it in the uh, in the white blood cells. So any guess what are these findings? Yes, this is this is peripheral blood film from SLE patient. True. Yes, this is LE cells. That's correct. So this is engulfed material, uh, usually coated by antibodies uh, as LE bodies, and then ingested by uh, viable. Uh, neutrophil, and as you can see here, the nucleus of the neutrophils is pushed to periphery. So LE cells is uh, an in vitro phenomenon, uh, rarely found in vivo. Uh, anticoagulant blood is uh, agitated inside the the tube by unknown mechanism, so that uh, nucleus are released from the disrupted uh, leukocyte and the other neutrophil will ingest, uh, ingest this, uh, uh, this body, uh, which call it LE body. Uh, again, this LE cell is characteristic of uh, SLE. Okay, this smear, any guess what is these cells? What are these cells? Yes, this case from CLL, but what I mean these cells, what you call these cells, not the viable lymphocyte, these cells. Yes, I'm receiving some, yeah. True, so this is smudge cells. This is high power of this smudge cells, so also known as basket cells. And these cells are ruptured white blood cells, uh, leaving their uh, nucleus to be free. And they can be uh, pathologic and uh, non-pathologic. Uh, a non-pathologic cause may occur during the smearing uh, process. So. Uh, smudge cells are produced if uh, there is heavy pressure uh, on the spreading uh, slide. And uh, a pathological causes of smudge cells uh, may be due to uh, leukemia. And uh, in the lab, uh, an albumin uh, preparation uh, can be used uh, when many basket cells are uh, present for cellular preservation in order to identify uh, these uh, cells. 
Okay. Okay. What is this cells? It's simple. And I guess. Hypersegmented neutrophil. Yes. So this is uh, hypersegmented neutrophil. Remember, the normal neutrophils have an average of uh, three loops and always, always fewer than five loops. Uh, so hypersegmentation or hypersegmented uh, neutrophils usually seen in the in the megaloblastic uh, anemia. And it considers sometimes as a dysplastic feature if it's combined with the other uh, dysplastic uh, 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 morphological uh, finding. I think this is my last slide. Thank you for your uh, attendance. So now I can open the, the window for any questions. So there is one question, uh, how we can differentiate between LE cells and uh, hemophagocytic cells. Uh, usually in hemophagocytic cells, you can see the, the, the monocytes or the histocytes engulfing the, the other uh, viable cells like neutrophils or RBCs or nucleated red blood cells uh, and the platelet. And hemophagocytosis uh, mainly observed in the bone marrow more than in the peripheral blood. But in the LE cells, it's large uh, red inclusions, and it's only uh, uh, one inclusion, and it's inside the neutrophils, uh, pushing the loops of the neutrophils in the, at the periphery. So it's easy to be differentiated. Uh, That's true. This is another question. Can smudge cells occur due to wrong way of making the blood smear? Yes, it can be uh, because uh, all time uh, when we uh, prepared the smear, we, we prepared it manually. But right now, we reduce this uh, uh, artifact by using the machine. But true. If we want to prepare and we apply more pressure, we can uh, produce more smudge cells. Yes, uh, what are the dysplastic changes in the white blood cells? Uh, there is a lot of dysplastic changes and I will, I will leave this question uh, to my colleague, Dr. Nahla tomorrow, but uh, because I believe she will discuss some cases for MDS. So now benign, uh, I discussed only the benign uh, white blood cell disorder. Uh, and I, I believe, uh, I'm sure Dr. Nahla, she will go through uh, these features uh, in details. Type, uh, next question. Yeah, can you show more slide regarding Leishmania? The, the important thing regarding Leishmania, it is uh, uh, extra and intracellular uh, inclusions. So, and it's smaller than the other uh, inclusion when we compare it, for example, the histos uh, uh, histoplasma, see histoplasma, it's large round, dark inclusion. This is why it's called capsulatum. So it's easily can be differentiated from the small uh, uh, inclusions that distributed extra and intracellular. And this is what we call it a kinetoblast. Uh, and usually it's characterized by double dot appearance, not like the histoplasma. Okay, what other question? Uh, This is a good example. What is the source of our roads and from where it is coming? So our road is the abnormal collection of the 
of the primary uh, and secondary granules in the uh, in the blast. So there is a lot of uh, when you have a, a leukemia process. So these cells uh, behave abnormally and in, the, in in crazy ways. So these are abnormal uh, collection of the granules, mainly primary and secondary together. So this is how the our roads its form. Smudge cells could be of any type of cells, uh, mainly lymphocyte, but yes, it can be any type of the cells. Sometimes you will find some rub, uh, ruptured neutrophils and xenophils and basophils with the same uh, process. Okay. Uh, next question, can you please? Uh... Yes, uh, I think Dr. Muhammad al Muhammad he he went through this question yesterday. Can you please describe the difference between uh, thin and uh, thick uh, film for malaria? So usually thick film uh, it used to identify if uh, there is uh, malaria or not, and the thin film is uh, usually uh, used to identify the species. So this is the main issue. So. First, you will go through a uh, thick film just to identify if there is malaria. Then after you, uh, after uh, thick film, it's positive for malaria, then you will go to the uh, thin film to identify uh, what kind of species that you have it in the thin film. Uh, recording, I think from the SSPD uh, website. Uh, can sure, uh, our roads seen in mature cells? Yes, uh, our roads, uh, be careful. When you deal with the APL and uh, the main treatment for the APL is uh, ATRA, uh, which make these neoplastic uh, or abnormal promyrocyte to start differentiated. So some, if you don't give another chemo to kill these cells, of course, some of these cells, when uh, start differentiated, it can reach to a level uh, or the stage of uh, neutrophils, and still there is uh, our roads. And uh, in the follow-up uh, bone marrow, please be careful. When you examine the follow-up uh, bone marrow or peripheral blood for the patient who diagnosed uh, with APL, don't uh just uh, uh don't just wait and uh, examine or look for the promyocyte no also examine the neutrophil very carefully because sometimes there will be uh, abnormal uh, neutrophils still keeping uh, some faint uh, our roads uh If we have our roads in the neutrophils, do we consider it as a part of dysplasia? And I will consider this as a part of residual disease, okay? Especially in the background. So the our roads, you will never see in the uh, our roads in the in the other uh, in the other uh, context uh, other than the uh, acute leukemia. However, some uh, very 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 rare findings shows uh, uh, lymphocytes with the our road like uh, inclusion, but it does uh, it's not related to the leukemia process. Okay, how we can differentiate between monocyte and reactive lymphocyte? As I said in earlier, monocyte is large, uh, larger cells, and uh, usually uh, shows uh, vacuolation and uh, 
blue-gray uh, cytoplasm with uh, indented uh, nucleus. Uh, but the reactive uh, lymphocyte, uh, it's uh, size-wise, it's smaller than uh, monocyte, and the NC ratio is high, showing scant uh, little uh, cytoplasm, uh, dark blue with very condensed uh, chromatin. Uh, and uh, inconspicuous nuclei. Uh, and uh, if we compare it with the monocyte, monocyte, the chromatin is more open if we compare it with the lymphocyte. And uh, also one of the key features uh, uh, that I tell my colleague, always, always look to the other uh, cells to compare the normal uh, cells with one that you are Examine. So if you have atypical lymphocytes, so you can compare it with the other normal lymphocyte in the, in the same uh, field or in the same uh, peripheral blood smear. Okay, is there any, uh, I think this is a the microscope out and depend on the good new machine that prepares light and send it electron gate to doctor and clinician together with the everyone that yes uh, regarding this question with this micro uh, microscope out on dependent yes so nowadays there is era of technology there is some something called the digital uh, pathology so they can use artificial intelligence uh, technology so computer can recognize these cells by giving all the picture and uh, a million of the picture of the different uh, variant and different shape of the cells and the computer start to recognize these cells and memorize this morphology and start identifying uh, the cells. So it's very advanced technology and uh, some center uh, in US and Korea start using this artificial intelligence in the lab. And hopefully one day, we can use it also in our laboratory. Uh, okay, reactive lymphocyte. As I said, reactive lymphocytes mean uh, lymphocyte showing uh, or uh, start uh, showing some variation or alteration in the morphology uh, that not similar to the normal one or the typical classical one because the classical lymphocyte is small cells double size of the RBCs, uh, condensed uh, chromatin, uh, high NC ratio. But the reactive one starts showing uh, some uh, changes in the, uh, in, the, in the morphology by showing some abundant cytoplasm. The color of the cytoplasm start become more darker uh, compared to the, uh, the normal, the classical one. Uh, but the, the morphology of the nucleus is still the same, condensed chromatin, inconspicuous nuclei, because whenever you find uh, the chromatin is open or fine with clear uh, nuclei, so that means this is immature form of the lymphocyte, can be uh, pro-lymphocyte uh, or can be blast. So this is how we can differentiate. And always, always, as I said, compare the cells that you are, uh, or the suspicious cells with the other cells in the same field or in the same slide, because lymphoma cells usually shows monotonous lymphoma, uh, morphology. However, reactive lymphocyte shows variation of morphology. This is not uh, any hundred uh, percent, but generally in all, most of the cases. Okay, next key, uh, question. Yeah, this is a good question. Why white blood cells qualitative and quantitative abnormalities in the COVID patient? So COVID patient usually presented with uh, severe uh, lymphopenia uh, and severe, severe lymphopenia and the and the morphology of the lymphocyte in the COVID patient, it's really, really uh, atypical uh, and uh, 
and shows uh, a very, very uh, abnormal uh, morphology, but not in the level of uh, uh, blast. Yani. You cannot uh, confuse yourself or you become confused. This is blast. No, this is mature uh, lymphocyte, but it's very abnormal, atypical due to the infection. But Usually, COVID patients they presented with the severe lympho, uh, uh, lymphocytes. So it's sometimes it's difficult to find good number of lymphocyte to give a, a good uh, morphological assessment. Uh, I am slide. Okay. Some question I couldn't understand what exactly you mean, but let me go through other question. Between. So yes, uh, what is difference between reactive lymphocyte and atypical lymphocyte? So uh, in the older day, uh, the word of the reactive uh, is similar as atypical especially in the hematological field, but the atypical uh, in, the, in the anatomical pathology, it's uh, more likely to be abnormal or neoplastic, but in the hematology, uh, atypical, uh, it's more likely to be reactive. This is why in the report, some people or some pathologists, they use uh, reactive slash atypical lymphocyte rather than using only ety uh, atypical only because it will it will make the clinician a uh, little bit confused. So, and I prefer if you want to use reactive alone, it's fine. If you want to, if you want to use atypical also, just put reactive or atypical slash reactive lymphocyte. But if you want to say this is abnormal lymphocyte, you can say atypical or abnormal atypical uh, lymphocyte. Okay, in case of platelet elevation, it shows white. Why are you want? We are as a clinician in hematology and oncology want the slide in system, same as radiology picture. Um, and I think this is uh, something like again uh, under the digital pathology and the artificial intelligence. So hopefully in the future, we can reach this point to upload all the morphology in the system. How common to see lymphoplasma, lymphoplasmacytic cells in the COVID patient? Uh, not uh, sometimes, yes, because lymphoplasmacytoid cells, it's a kind of, uh, of uh, morphological alteration in the lymphocyte that uh, correlate with the infection, especially in the viral infection. So again, uh, COVID patient usually presented with lymphopenia, so it's hard to find a good number of lymphocytes to go uh, through them and to examine their, uh, their morphology uh, thoroughly. Yes, is there any case slide for infectious monoclonosis? The case that I saw it, uh, in my presentation, it's from the patient who has infectious monoclonosis. Okay, next question. What is the significance of finding toxic granulation in normal, not septic, individual. Usually the toxic granulation, it's mainly correlate with the uh, infection and inflammatory process. And the degree of the, of the uh, increased granulation and how much it's uh, dense and darker, it's co also correlate with uh, how the patient uh, 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 can correlate with the uh, viral load or the bacterial load in the body. So in the normal uh, person, it's 
obviously you should not to see neutrophil with the toxic granulation, but sometimes this me the staining process uh, may make these neutrophils uh, to show their granules more darker, and it can be a false uh, finding. It's not a true finding. But in general, toxic granulation, you only see it in the reactive process. Uh, as I said, uh, infection, inflammatory process, drug, uh, secondary to a paraneoplastic uh, condition in some uh, cancers. Okay. Dr. Faisal, and I will, and I will, uh, really, I will, uh, I will meet with the head section and with the head to, to let them know about your idea to, to send all these pictures through the system. Don't worry. Yes, uh, what the best area uh, of the smear to detect uh, cells inclusion. Again, the best area for uh, uh, of the peripheral blood examination is the body of the uh, of the slide. So, but of course, if you find your answer and uh, your uh, uh, your evaluation uh, uh, is uh, sufficient by reviewing the body of the slide. Or, uh, so no need to go to the tail or the, uh, to the head of the uh, slide. But if you have uh, suspicious and there is clinical history of infection, uh, 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 especially parasites, so at this time you have to go to the uh, peripheral to the tail of the slide and even to the head of the slide just to pick up this uh, parasite because the parasite is heavy uh, organism so while when you just uh, when you smear the slide it will keep uh, either in the tail or in the in the head of the uh, smear and even when you uh, reviewing the slide for patient with uh, severe leukopenia and you are suspecting, uh, for example, leukemia, or you're suspecting uh, abnormal uh, cells. So go to the edges and go to the uh, head of the cell because, again, while spreading, maybe these cells will distribute it or uh, distribute it in the edges of the slide, not in the body uh, of the smear. Okay. Yes, white blood cells is usually normal with absolute uh, lymphopenia in COVID patient. Yes, because, because sometimes uh, COVID patient, you can see normal white blood cells with the normal neutrophils or sometimes high number of neutrophils, but the main uh, player in the COVID patient is the lymphocyte, which is reduced. So the absolute uh, lymphocyto, uh, lymphopenia, uh, it can be uh, it can be corrected by the increase of the other uh, other cell uh, sub white blood cell uh, subtype like neutrophils monocytes. Is there special case? Yes. Weekends. Yes, we can see increased granulation in patient using GCS, if that's true. This is why I said increased granulation. So toxic toxic changes, it's a terminology that given for uh, neutrophils that showing increased granulation, uh, either due to infection or drugs like GCSF. Uh, so, uh, but how we can use this word, we can, Correlate always we correlate. So if you while you're examining the peripheral blood and you you see uh, some uh, uh, neutrophils with the increased granulation, you can easily say this is 
uh, neutrophils showing uh, increased granulation or toxic granulation, uh, likely due to uh, GCSF or growth factor uh, uh, therapy effect. Uh, and again, always correlate with the clinical correlation. So patient, if he presented uh, with infection, so it's mainly due to infection, but if there is, if there is no any signs or history of infection and uh, inflammatory process, so again, you have to look after what the reason behind this. And usually in the GCSF, not all the cells shows increased granulation. And again, uh, in GCSF, you will find some immature uh, cells in addition to the uh, neutrophils. We can, can we see toxic graduation in the hemolysis? Um, not usually. Again, uh, toxic granulation mainly seen in the infection process, inflammatory uh, malignancy. But in the hemolysis, in particular, it's not uh, it's not a part of the hemolysis unless if the hemolyzed patient he always he also uh, has uh, infection or inflammatory process. Yes, any effect of the steroid drugs on the white blood cells? Usually, steroids it increase the uh, neutrophils, and but in the morphology wise, it may show some, uh, yeah, any little changes, uh, but not that much, and not in the level of the uh, true dysplasia. You can find some uh, abnormal uh, or atypical morphology, but I don't think it exceed. 3% of the neutrophils or maybe 5%. This is why when we are when we reporting the uh, the dysplasia usually we we use uh, uh, a number of uh, involved cells so usually based on the WHO any any dysplasia above 10% it considered significant but what you, if you have a dysplasia less than 10% or less than 5% so Based on the WHO, any dysplasia more than 10% it's significant. However, if there is cases shows five to 10% uh, dysplasia, again, again, you have to correlate these findings with the clinical uh, presentation, with the clinical background, with the other uh, lineage, uh, start to see if the patient has uh, abnormal blast or abnormal cells. But if it's less than 3%, it can be seen in any condition, so it's not that much significant. Okay, next. Yes, in the xenophilia, this is what I said. Usually, there is a there is a a uh, big list of uh, conditions and disease that cause uh, eosinophilia. So this is why any patient who presented with eosinophilia just uh, um, exclude the secondary causes before we jump to the primary uh, causes. Uh, and again, sometimes patient with uh, severe allergic reaction can show eosinophils more than uh, 30%. But again, this is what I said, there is short-lived eosinophilia and uh, prolonged eosinophilia. So prolonged eosinophilia based on the WHO, it's uh, defined as more than uh, three uh, to six months. So this is prolonged persistent eosinophilia that need more investigation. But is xenophilia that associated with parasite or severe allergic reaction, it's uh, usually uh, short-lived. It can be disappear after you uh, treat the, the, the primary cause.
طيب اوكي سو ثانك يو فور يور اتندنج سو وي جاست هاف اكسترا فور مينيت سو هوبفلي اي اي جيف يو سمبل تو ذا بوينت وايد نن مليجنت وايد بلس سيلز فايندنج سو هوبفلي وي We can continue these uh, courses in the future, and inshallah tomorrow we'll continue this uh, uh, activity with Dr. Anahna. Shukran jazeelan.